Hey everyone. So what we're going to do here is just a little, what you might call descriptive statistics. So I put this income current, current income. Now notice, this is what I'm creating here is a vector. Now income, notice you need a space. You can't have a space. So you put that little thing there. And then I do this, the little pointy thing and the slash. And C is for combined. So you want to think about that. So I'm combining all of these to create this income. Now, this is really important for research. So check it out. But notice this income, and this is very important. There's no comma here. So it's like $42,500, right? You put a comma there and it won't go. So the comma will separate these and create different income. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And they're in parentheses. So I hit this warning, our graphics up. Oh, I'm gonna install my new version. But anyways, income, and then you get a line current. So that's the name of it. And then you've got this little guy and girl here. Look at, boom. And that you can also do the equal sign. I prefer that, those two um, signs, because with the equal sign, you can actually do other things. And sometimes it gets confusing, but that's gonna be up to you. So let's take a look. All you got to do is write three. See, so you see it here, and now just press it. Boom. So what did I do? Remember, you can call things anything. So to create what we call vector, uh, and these will be characters, and we're going to later see how we change them to factors. But these are, this is just going to do basic descriptive statistics, but we need some kind of basic statistics. But this is pretty cool because think about it. A lot of people here might be thinking, I don't care about this. But let's say you do any kind of research, any kind of job, any kind of anything. You can literally take information from, uh, say, a newspaper or do they still have newspapers or, you know, anything, any kind of Internet and create something. So you literally could say, for example, I'll do it here, population. You know, I did that. Notice that. Let me do that again. Um, in my computer. Now look at, I lost it. <laughs> uh, so anyways, like this and this, right? The little arrow and then the um, little line and then a C and then parentheses and you create. So population, let's say you do a population of all the towns in Arizona. I'm just going to write like, okay, this town has 99,000 people. Wait, what would it be that? Uh, this other town has, you know, 45 thousand people and the third town has eighty seven hundred eight you know eighty eight eight hundred and seventy yeah that's funny but anyways the point is is that you know then I do it boom and I just made population what's your boom so that's pretty cool and you can do anything you're doing. So you, whatever research you're interested in, you know, social movements, uh, how many missiles are fired into the Ukraine from Russia, you can literally create a data set in R for free. It's This is all free. So, but we're, we're going to work with the income current now. Now, let's say, for example, you want to know, as we do descriptive statistics, central measured tendencies, et cetera, which is in that small chapter, which is free, you should be thankful. No big book to buy. These stat books are way too expensive and I can do it on my own for free. So basically you want to ask, for example, let's take a look. Mean. That's it. Look at that. That's easy. What's the average of income current? So you come here, income current, and boom, descriptive statistic, right? And then what's the median point, right? The medium point of income current you gotta call it something in the okay 5130 so it's it's a little lower than the mean itself because i think this high number is bringing it up which is important because then where we do measures of variability you can get the standard deviation which is measured by how many points on the average is the median uh, is the average are these surrounding the average better said so let's take a look at this and take a look. That's just SD. So you put in income current. And boom, you've got it. So that's a that's a that's a pretty decent size, 26,000 uh points surrounding the mean. Why is the uh standard deviation important? 
Well, I'm not sure if it picks this up in the chapter, but let's just say, for example, we collect income, right? And then uh, Bezos or Bozo, whatever you want to call him, if you like him, I hate him. He wants to go to the moon. Uh, what you think of his economic policies, good or bad, etc. We'll leave that for another time. But the owner of Amazon walks in and it brings up all the numbers. So the mean, the average goes up so significantly. You want to know the standard deviation because as it gets bigger, it tells you, you know, where the numbers revolve around the average point and you want the lowest number possible. But what's good about this is in R, it has very easy functions to find out this information and it's all free. So that's basic descriptive statistics and variability. It's not my, what I do personally, but a lot of people might want to know how to create uh, this information out of different data sets. So that's very, very useful. And another useful thing, and this will be our first time uh, really downloading a package, is finding the Gini coefficient to see to measure the inequality. The Gini coefficient tries to measure the extent to which uh, some group of numbers, it could be GDP of African countries, it could be income, it could be a wide range of numbers, but what's the inequality there? Is it large or is it big? So the smaller, the better. Well, not always better because that means everyone's poor. So I mean, it really depends, but the Gini coefficient is very, very interesting. But you need to install a package. I already have it on there, but if you do install, I'll just do it again. Um, this is the inequality package. Um, it's basically in equality. Oh, it won't come up. So here, let me um, just do it like this. So basically in X, we're going to see you're installing packages. It's very, very interesting. Um, I already have it on mine. Uh, so yeah, it didn't seem to make a mistake. Uh, so it's, you got to use quotations and then I N E Q. And remember, install packages. Right when you do like that, you'll see it's installed. No, you don't want the past. You want install packages. So let's check it out. Now, after you install any package and after you install the package, and let's say you get out of R and come back, it's like the 1980s, the movie The Breakfast Club. You got to go back to the library, right? You people don't go to the library as much now, but before you did. So look at this. It'll pop up. There it is, package. Boom. So that's pretty good. Uh, inequality, right? So you have inequality. What do we do with this inequality package? Well, now we can measure the Gini coefficient of this income. So you, what you do is inequality, right? That's the command. And you're going to put in what we call income current. And 0.21, that's not too bad. Uh, the higher, the more um, inequality. Uh, sometimes, you know, it depends on the numbers you're looking at. Uh, I won't ask specifically like, um, okay, well, you know, the inequality, the Gini coefficient means this, but you will have to run it later on. So you basically have inequality, right? So inequality, what's the extent of inequality? And that is very important for not just economists, but people maybe you're studying, you know, instability, does a larger inequality worse than a smaller inequality for the stability of a country? There's a lot of things you can do with it. So 0.21 isn't too, too bad, but like one is the, the, the biggest. So let's take a look at a plot. In this plot, this will be our first plot, capital L, C, boom, in oops income boom oh mine popped up in the other let me see if it pops up in the plots it's not popping up in my plots so i would have to share that uh with people i wonder why that started recently that it wasn't um popping up in my um Plots. I don't know why. Uh, so let me share it. It usually pops up there, but I, I hit something where now it's popping up over here. I forgot about that. I'll have to fix that. Uh, but that's an easy fix here because I'll just um, share that. Sorry about that. Let me share it. 
Here it is. That's the Lorenz curve that popped up. It you're supposed to pop up in the plots area. I'll have to uh, fix that. But um, here it is. It's the Lorenz curve here. So that's it. I mean, the, the thicker here, the more inequality. So it's basically going down. This is the line. And then this is a representation of how much inequality. So if it was down here, there'd be more inequality. If it was up here, there'd be less, this little uh, curve. So what it's doing is measuring the extent of which um, inequality is within this data. That's called the Lorenz curve. And obviously after a person named Lorenz and the Gini coefficient is after a person uh, named, uh, I forget, <laughs> a Gini something, I don't know. But anyways, you might have studied the Gini coefficient in other classes. What's interesting here is you can actually take World Bank data, IMF, United Nations, any kind of data and put it in here and run it just like I did. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do another share. I'm going to go back to our... And basically, that is how you plot. So notice it's P-O-L-O-T. Now, this is important for R. Parentheses, capital L, people get that C, then parentheses again, and then whatever name, parentheses, parentheses. So everything within um, R has to be within parentheses. So like you couldn't go here, I'm pressing up again like this. Like this. It's only, it's parentheses, parentheses. So you'd have to need two parentheses here. So if I don't do it, see, it says plus, so it's saying something's missing. So um, you have to do that. The same thing goes, like, let's say, for example, I do this. Watch. See, plus. And then you might get um, different. Um, my mistake. I wanted to do not that one. This. So let's say I go there. See, expected symbol. And so it's not working. Um, so I go up here. I put it. Boom. And that's one of the things, too, if you start getting like, oh, this isn't working, check how you write it. How you always write things incorrectly. So like I do at least. So like, let's say, for example, I give this a capital when it's not supposed to be. Boom. Error. So, you know, cannot could not find the function I and EQ. And it's like, oh, OK, that's because it has to be I. And the similar function here to get the inequality is called the genie. It's the same exact thing from the inequality. It's just another function. Same exact thing. You get the same number. Here, let me do income. And that's it. So what's interesting about this is uh, what's descriptive statistics and variability. Standard deviation, Gini coefficient is more um, variability. But what's interesting is uh, you can take any data and start finding the mean, the median. You can do mode. That's how many, uh, uh, what's the number coming up the most. But R has a funny thing with that. It's, 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 it's a little more complex, but I'll, you know, that's not really that important for this class. But the goal is, is like, let's say, oh, what's the average salary of an ASU worker, right? So then you go there, you can put all the numbers in and hit, the uh, mean, right? And then you could say, you know, what's the median point? Or you could say, what's the standard deviation? As we know, you know, there are some people who make a ton of money at ASU and others like me, very poor. Uh, so you basically can do anything you want. And that's what makes R kind of cool. So it's like, even if you're like, oh, you know, a lot of people don't want to take quantitative and statistical methods, but it's really cool because you could take any number and then you can start looking at the inequality and all these basic descriptive statistics, the central tendencies and all this measurements of variability. So, um, and you just learned how to install a package. So you took this, see, install the package up here. Right. Remember, not install, but install packages. Uh, remember, in parentheses, quotes, make sure if it's capital. It, it, um, let me be clear on this. R is very, very sensitive to whether or not you're capitalizing things or not. It's not sensitive, ironically, to um, with a commerce. So like if I go back. It's going way back to the. Um, Income. Like, look at the population. So what happens if I say this? What? Oh, no, you think, oh, man, this is going to be really weird. But it actually doesn't do anything. But it is very, very um, 
um, sensitive to uh, capitalization, leaving out a um, a comma and other things. Putting C, like like if I put C capital C C, it doesn't work. So you got to keep an eye on that when you're when you're doing it. It takes a meticulous mind, which I do not have. So which means if I can do this, you can do it. And, you know, there's, a, you know, to really go back and say, OK, did I do this right? So it's not one of those things you want to just zip through and then say, oh, yeah, you know, I, I did this uh, and everything is, you know, no, you want to basically make sure it's written correctly. If you have a raw, it's, I'm a terrible speller. So I spell things wrong all the time. So if I do like library, you know, like, like, that's why I like this because it pops up library. But if I like write it like library or something like that, and I, which I do all the time. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I got to get that inequality package out. You know, it's like, boom, nothing. Right. But all because I didn't do library. I spelt it wrong. So you got to keep an eye on those little things in R. I know that that's a little, you know, monotonous to talk about, but People, when I do the in class with statistics, you know, people are always like, oh, could you help me here? Could you help me here? And it's usually something like that because they're getting these errors. So thanks a lot, everyone, uh, for coming out. I appreciate it. And that will be our lecture uh, on basic descriptive statistics, getting a package, installing the package, uh, then getting it out of the library and then running um the inequality that is the Gini coefficient and then doing our first plot. So uh, take care everyone. And I hope everyone is staying safe.